All right, I feel like I've been watching Starhopper on repeat for weeks now. We gotta get another SpaceX launch in, but when is the next one? We're talking about that coming up, but first, it's five o'clock. I'm in the office. I gotta go home. Okay, so SpaceX is in a little bit of a lull right now, and it's actually, it's not really a bad thing for SpaceX. I mean, they're actually in kind of the unusual situation where they are ready before their customers are actually ready with their payloads. So still on track for 2019, we've got a couple of communication satellites that are still gonna go up. We've got another resupply mission to the International Space Station that's scheduled for December. We've got a whole bunch of Starship and super heavy developments that are gonna be happening as well as Starship flights as early as next month. And then we also have the Crew Dragon that they're still trying to fit in for this year. All right, so I was on my way home and I had to stop because we had like, look at these clouds that are up here. Are those not pretty awesome? But th that's not even the best part because actually over here, this is, this is kind of awesome. <laughs> So originally, SpaceX was going to launch the Crew Dragon sometime in like the July time frame. But before they could do that, there's an abort test that they had to do so they could demonstrate that they could keep the astronauts safe in case there was an anomaly. Now they've already done a pad abort test. That was back in May 2015. That's if there's an anomaly on the launch pad before the rocket is even lifted off. <laughs> Slightly below nominal. Everything for that went just fine. The abort test that they still had to do was their in-flight abort test. That's where they launch the rocket, they take it to the maximum dynamic pressure area or max Q, and then do an in-flight abort where they separate the capsule and pull it away from the Falcon 9 booster to simulate some sort of anomaly in the middle of flight, see if they can pull the astronauts safely away and get them back to the ground. Now, you're probably aware back in the spring as they were getting prepared for that in-flight abort test, they were doing some ground testing on the Crew Dragon capsule. This is the same Crew Dragon capsule that flew on DM-1 or Demo-1 back in March. And so they were going to reuse this capsule for another flight test. And so what they were doing with that ground test was testing their Draco thrusters and then the much larger Super Draco engines. Now everything with the Draco thrusters went just fine, but it was when the Super Draco engines were about to ignite that suddenly... Oh, no. Yep. Kaboom. Now this is a major anomaly, and obviously if this had happened with astronauts on board, they would not have survived. So it's important that SpaceX and NASA figure out exactly what went wrong, and they think they have. Okay, so what NASA and SpaceX found was that a little bit of liquid oxidizer got into the helium lines that pressurize the whole system and actually push the oxidizer and the fuel into the combustion chamber. Now, the way that happens is that they had a check valve in place that's not supposed to allow liquid oxidizer to go back into the helium lines. A little bit of that liquid oxidizer did get into the helium lines. Now, the liquid oxidizer didn't really do any damage just sitting there, but when the helium system pressurized, it forced that liquid oxidizer back through the check valve at super high speeds and basically destroyed the whole thing. Now that check valve is made of titanium and the titanium actually caught fire. And fire near hypergolic chemicals? Not so good. Now the good news here is that they've identified what the problem is. And so they have a path forward where they can actually fix it and move on. So instead of those check valves, SpaceX is gonna use burst disks. Now somebody might ask, well, why didn't SpaceX use burst disks in the first place? And part of that issue kind of comes down to reusability. Burst disks are not reusable and SpaceX obviously wants to reuse as much as they can. But a lot of it also comes down to the way they test all their components before launch. Because burst disks, because they're not reusable and they're one time use only, SpaceX SpaceX can't test them. They're, they put them in and they have to work. Now, burst disks are pretty reliable in general, so I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue for them. But especially if it solves the problem of the capsule going kaboom, I'm all for it. I mean, look at ultimately, we have to keep the astronauts safe. Reusability is great, but those astronauts have to be safe or else the funding and the support behind the program just isn't going to be there. 
So now if SpaceX wants an opportunity to actually fly the Crew Dragon capsule before the end of the year, they're gonna have to get that in-flight abort test in pretty soon. SpaceX's CEO Gwyn Shotwell has said that they're still targeting the end of the year for Crew Dragon, so hopefully we should see that in-flight abort here coming up within the next month. In the meantime though, SpaceX still has a ton of stuff going on before the end of the year. We got Starship developments happening, we got a Starship launch as early as next month, and potentially up to four Starlink launches before the end of the year, with 60 satellites per launch. I mean, that's crazy. So, they got a lot of stuff going on. You guys should come with me. Let's go home. In addition to Crew Dragon, SpaceX is also doing a ton of development on their Starship prototype. They've already started filing permits over in Texas so that they can do launches there. And over at the Florida site, they've already started outfitting Pad 39A to get ready for Starship flights as early as next month. This is going to be crazy. You guys hear that? What's going on out there? You hear that? Some kind of fireworks going on. Because everybody's excited about what SpaceX has going on. Alright, let's go back inside. All right, so the big updates are going to be Starship updates coming on September 28th. Elon Musk is going to update the public with everything that's been going on. That's going to be the next big thing that happens for SpaceX. And then we should see a Starlink launch and maybe the actual Starship launch itself, both scheduled for October right now. So don't be discouraged. We got a lot more to go for SpaceX. And next year is pretty jam-packed as well, like 24 Starlink launches in addition to customer launches. That's on track for 2020. It's gonna be a crazy year, I cannot wait.